Greetings and salutations to all members of mankind. Welcome to the Jimson and Roscoe Christmas Idiotic Show. I think that's what I'm calling it this year. Sweet. Sick. Why have I done this? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because for the last six months, you guys have been doing your podcasting. Mm. And I featured on one of them. The question that I got from a lot of people were like, who the fuck are those two? So I thought we'd have this special and let them know a little bit more about you two. Okay. Where you've come from. Mm. You've got Tom and Jerry. You've got Laurel and Hardy. And you've got Jimson and Roscoe. Do. Mm. Where did all this start? <laughs> now, one a, thing I do know. Can we have a toast first? Yep, we will have a toast. This is just Ribena. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yes, Ben. The blood of yes, Christ. Ben. Blood it's of Christmas. Christ. Yeah, come on. So where did all this start? <clears throat> what? Years ago. How far back you going? <laughs> yeah. To the very, very beginning. Oh, where it all began. East Twerton? Yeah, it's East Twerton, infant school. Yeah. Twerton? East what Twerton. part of Bath's that? South Bath? Lower Bristol so Road. East Twerton is on Lower Bristol Road, the one opposite... The print, old, printing, the old place. printing place. Behind where the old bath print is. Near the old sex shop? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a landmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Landmark. Of course, of course. <laughs> of course it was. Excuse the pun, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, wasn't it? Yeah. I've got, I have got a photo somewhere of, I think it's like my fucking... I think I've birthday. seen it. ...birthday or something. Uh. Of a sort of dry slope, ski slope. Yeah, with Lee. With Churchill. Yeah, I remember no, that. No, I've seen another one of you two. Oh, yeah, we've got reindeers. That was infant school. Very fresh-faced. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. OK, what schools did we... Well, we all of them. talk about what schools we went to, but... We went to, we went to all of them, all the same schools. All the same schools. East Twerton, South Twerton. Beach and Cliff. Cliff. All of them. Yeah. How did it all start, then? Now, when I say how did it all start, the musical scene. First of all, influences. Influences. Mm. So for me, my earliest influence was of music was a lot of power ballads. So my mum listened to a lot of power ballads. When you say power ballads, what do you mean? Is there something like you could you sing me a one line? I wanna know what love is. Power ballad. Power ballad. Power ballad. Yeah. Them one. Eighties. Yeah. Long ones. hair, spandex, and fucking leathers, and fucking the bands he's wearing head and shit. Mm. So my mum used to listen to a lot of power ballads. Would your mum be Rachel? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. We have some words from Rachel a little bit later. Cool. Nice. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, power Don't want to get you thinking or anything yeah, like that. And then um, from then, I'd say my hip-hop influences started about 10. So there was a bully lived nearby. And he was listening to um, Tupac All Eyes On Me one day. And he had a double cassette and he was like shouting, but like I was fucking mesmerized by the fucking sound. And from then, I just started going through the backpack with back catalogues, all the two pack stuff. So I started with uh, two pack clips now and then just fucking went through it. At that time, you two were Bredgens, yeah? What, two pack days? Yeah. 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 yeah, so this would have been. So would've when been. he found two pack, he found you and you found two pack? No, we were. No, they. We weren't in the same class. Eh? Nah. Oh, right. One but in the we high were... class, one in the remedial. No, just, I don't know. because yeah, it was just two classes. This is before they had... Like, Them ones. The groups. This is, like, still junior school. Oh, right. Cool. Yeah. So this is, like, yeah, yeah, you'd had two classes in our year. It's just separate, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, senior school probably, wasn't it? Yeah, senior school. But, yeah, like, um, so this would have probably been, like, what, year five, year six that I found, like, Tupac and then started just going to HMB. Mm. Randomly fucking picking up covers and going, yeah, that looks all right. You know so I mean? when was the day you said, I could do that? So my mate Wayne, he had Hip Hop EJ. And he used to go around to his house and you know, he had a fucking <coughs> CD burner before CD burners were fucking, he had a big nice house at the top of Entry Hill. He used to go there and he used to fucking get him to burn CDs and that. And he had Hip Hop EJ. And what it was, used to drag and drop the sam sample blocks onto the screen. And, uh, yeah, from there I started writing raps, and they were fucking shit. Um, 
But they always are, aren't it, when you start? Well, you're basically mimicking fucking what West Coast gangster rappers yeah, say, yeah, which yeah. is like, I'm not a fucking West Coast gangster rapper. No. I'm not a gangster. Not from America, do you know what I mean? But it's like... You're from the West Country. That's the only thing we had as influence, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but like, I suppose it's like, to start anything, you mimic... Like, you are as a fucking baby, isn't it? You mimic your fucking... Everything you see around everything you. Everything you see around you. And then you... Until you can grow into it and fucking start... Okay, let's dabble with that. Let's dabble with that until you finally find your own sort of... Feet. But, um... So, did you do it individually? Or... Yeah. Were you, like, a team no, back then? No, 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 no. Not until what? I did it, like... I got into it early, man, because I was playing piano. No, I was playing... What? Keep- what? Piano! Yeah, I was playing... Sweet keys, dude! Yeah, man. Yeah? So I was playing keyboard from <laughs> four. <laughs> My mum had me on it from four. And then I started playing piano properly at, like, eight. Started doing concerts and competitions and that. From early. All, yeah. the, way, all the way through senior school. And then I think when I got to year 11, I was like, I just want to make beats now. But... The hip hop thing for me was uh, my next door neighbour got me into it when I was young. Same sort of way. Yeah, it was, it West was Coast, like East, East Coast stuff. It was Wu Tang. The first, wow. the first shit I heard was Wu Tang, I think, and then it was like Tribe Called Quest, and then it was the two pack and the that Nate Dogg. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like backpack yeah. type hip hop, I would yeah. say. What's Less the difference? The shit. What's the difference? He was into like conscious hip hop. Yeah, was into conscious hip hop basically. Like so, common. Yeah. Q-tip, so like people who were like Moss dropping Death. like well, not that fucking Tupac <clears throat> wasn't dropping knowledge, but he was like a lot more revolutionary. Yeah, like yeah. The whole like and DMX, DMX was like mm. fucking very like raw and fucking unapologetic, fucking like it was hardcore. Mm, mm. But like um yeah, so conscious stuff would be a lot more like um most death, like sleep quality, you know what I mean? So oh, yeah. right, okay. Talking Bit of the harder chill. stuff. No, well, chill, 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 like chill, yeah, like conscious, like, knowledge, like yeah. yeah. Do you know what I um, mean? That came later for me, a lot later. Um, yeah. So, all right. So individually, you were both doing your own thing. Now, one thing I do know mm. is there was a young crew called YMP. Yeah, yeah. When did that materialise? So we would make a set before YMP, wouldn't we? I can't, mate. Do you know what? Right. That all I can remember my earliest. My earliest memories of making music was on a tape. With oh. I had two tapes. With Austin? Yeah, in the house. So we'd play music for a ghetto blaster. Yeah. And then I, my dad had this, like, mad, like, ghetto blaster from the fucking 80s. And you could record <laughs> through this, like, built-in mic in the thing. Yeah. So we would play the tune and then spit through that onto tape. Right, okay. So, like, me and him were making music for fucking ages, like, do you know what I mean? And we were using Hip Hop EJ and shit as well. And then, obviously, you had the... You remember the little pen pen yeah, yeah. stick mics? Then we'd have oh, the right, stick yeah. mics, and we'd be like, nah, the sound quality is shit. So we'd end up wrapping things around it, socks, spitting across it like this, so you don't get the... Poop and all yeah, the pops yeah, yeah. and that. And then, I can remember, I wrote a diss to Jimson. And then I was like, nah... Did you hear it? No, never heard it. I, I can remember I wrote it and I was like, nah, it's too hard. I can't let anyone hear this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, fuck this, I'm going to start making music with Jimson. And then... Have you still I, got it? No. Oh. I haven't got any of that music. I, I wish I did. It. He's got some of he's got some If of anyone's shit. got it, Skippy. Yeah, right. he's got Skippy. some shit. Yeah. Is that Skipton? Yeah. yeah. If anyone's got it, We'll be like hearing it. from him later as well. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Rachel and Skipton. Skipton. Yeah, man. Sure. But yeah, no, that was like we we started making music before YMP. Yeah, Just, what, was that a flashes then? No, like number so I three was, or I was we K O Rico was the first one. We were yeah, I together. remember actually. So yeah, with K O Rico, who's K O Rico? So that mate, that would have been if that was then, and that was the first time we made music together. That would have been eighteen. You guys would have been, I would have been Yeah, I was in sixth form at Hayesfield. So at this time, YMP wasn't around? No. No. It would have been just after that, I think. Yeah, because it was like 2006. Six. Yeah, two double O sticks. Yeah. The beginning, the yeah. takeover. Yeah. So prior to that, I met Lodos and that through Flash. 
but this is before YMP. Mm. Right. Um, also, Easy Flip was recording down there, Leon. Lodos, yeah. Lodos, Lodos, Lodos. Um, uh, let's plug, yeah, let's plug, let's plug. Um, what is, what is... Ape Sense Media. Doing Ape Sense Media. Doing and fucking very well. it Black Wave, Black Wave as well? Black Wave. Yeah. Black um, Wave, and they've just dropped... Um, uh, Pickney, yeah. Pickney, yeah. HBO um, fucking nominated as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. nominated. He well, Mike. He was supposed Boom. to come Big up, Mike. Um, the other week, but he had to go to a shoot. So he is, he will be on here. Next year. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. Um, Get him on. Good luck. Because he's always got a lot to say, man. He's fucking... Mm. He's done a lot as well, mm. to be yeah. fair. He's, yeah, it'd be interesting to talk to. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I never ever thought he would drop MCing. Neither did I. And he was cold. It's for what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he was sick. Yeah, he yeah. was cold. Man. Mm. See, again, he was someone who had, who was way ahead, mm. coming with like knowledgeable fucking um, social commentary. Yeah. Mm. So he, so Lodos would have been a big influence on me. Yeah. You mm. know what I mean? Even though like, I class us as like being in the same crew and shit. Like, mm. I don't know, you all influence each other, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So YMP. Mm. How many? So, all right, we're going to get to the YMP days. Yeah. How many of you were in it? Not who hung around, who were the mainstays? There's quite a lot of us, man. Lodos. Yeah. Me, Roscoe, Smiley. Tommy D. Nemi. Tommy D. Wesley. Smiley Wesley. is Midnight. Yeah. 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 Midnight now, yeah. Stan. Um, Stan, Switch. Switch, yeah, yeah, Switch. Um, they... and, and Lady Hype. Yeah. Who's Lady Hype? Shireen. 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 Campbell. But that was like, but the main ones would have been, I would have said Lodo. Oh, yeah, Lodo's yeah, yeah. Wesley, right? Yeah. For the start? Yeah. Wes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Or maybe Stan as well. Nemi. I don't know. And but Nemi, yeah. yeah. And Smiley. Mm. Smiley was around from, I'm a lawbreaker, I'm a jawbreaker. <laughs> yeah. And he's still Big doing bar. bits now. Yeah. He made, midnight, he, he midnight, records all midnight, the time. Midnight, Shay? Shay? Midnight Cache. Midnight Cache on Instagram. Follow that dude. Mm. Yeah, he's still doing bits now. But yeah, there was two mixtapes on there. At the beginning and the takeover. Yeah. Um, and we were and big the, on Bebo. I remember we had... on Bebo? Be, on Bebo, right? We had more follow... Right, I, I, I'm almost 100% sure on this is a fact, right? We had more followers and views on our page at that time, than Boy Better Know. I swear to God. Serious? I don't know whether we paid for views. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether there was some trickery, but I remember 100% that we had more views and like engagement than Boy Better Know. Um, which is funny. I, I, got, I received a message the other day from someone asking me if I had the takeover. Is it? Mm. Have you still got this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, take someone was asking for the takeover. Is it? Yeah. Um, what's his face? Mikey Rodons. Oh, is it? So he's been looking for it for ages. He's asked Rodons, but he can't get hold of it. But he wants, to, he wants to copy it. Come on, people still want that. But yeah, that like the one P days were funny, man. Even then, like listening to myself back then, like fucking. Even then, it was still like. Yeah, I've got a oh. few pictures of you back then. Actually, uh, the fit, but it's the, the sound, the vocal sound. No, but when you see the pictures, you understand the sound. Yeah. And it's progression, yeah. isn't it? Is it? Progression. Like, you know, you but, can see your progression but, yeah. that way, man. Yeah. It's like we had the Inglorious Poet on the other week, and uh, he was saying the same. It's like I think everyone says, isn't it? When you start, you just fucking. Well, you're young, fresh, and you're green, aren't you? Mm. That's what they say. You're young, fresh, and you're green, and then you grow into and mold into whatever you're doing. But mm. do you know what? I, there was something interesting what Kano said in an interview, and he said, the difference was we had the internet, but it wasn't as prominent. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. had like Bebo, you had that, but like now it's like Instagram story, boom, it's out there. It's out there. Mm. Do you mean like mm. on the minute, up to the minute all the time? Yeah, man. You put something out, the internet's unforgiving. You put something out, which is a bit like, it's oh, gone. it's like fucking Doreen. It's like, but even then, like, it could be something that you were like, fuck, I wish I didn't put that in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But as soon as you put it out, it's gone. Or like you fuck up or whatever, and mm. it's like a, mm. where like, there was a lot of times where we had a lot of practice hours and stuff like where it's not on the internet because there was no live Do you think shit. nowadays, like the young people, because of the internet, do you think these young people are quick to throw their stuff on the internet before they're actually honing their skills? It's, yeah. e it's easier yeah. for them to do it, yeah, I think. Yes and no. They'll either, they'll either do that 
I think you're falling. There's apart. a lot of corner cutting. You're, yeah, because like, of the internet. Because the trouble is now, it's like every, every, to keep up with consumption, everyone wants to get it out. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. oh, oh. But there's also two sides to it. It's either you either procrastinate and never put it out, mm. and then it's just you just sit on a collection of stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, when I'm ready, when I'm ready, when I'm ready, and before you know it, it's like fucking ten years have passed, and it's like fuck, I should have put that out then because that would have been good then, but it's not right for me to put that out now, type thing. Mm. Or they just put it out and it's like, oh, I shouldn't put that out. But I don't know. Maybe whether I don't. I do you know what? I don't know what I think's better. Whether it's, it, it's all part and parcel, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, they they've got the fucking option for it. It's like the tools there are fucking powerful, but everyone's got access to it. Yeah. So to shine through, you just need to fucking you need to be different. I think mm. different and the system persistent you're doing fucking hard work. That's the thing. What everyone says is like, don't. What's the saying that they say? Don't Fuck imagine sake. about the results you didn't get for the work you didn't do. Especially, that's true. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like if you, you haven't put the fucking work in, then don't fucking moan that fucking Definitely. you're not gonna get the results or what you want. So two mixtapes out of YMP. Mm-hmm. How long were YMP on the scene for? One over there? Yeah, let's try to keep the foil over it, man. I mean, I, we we parted ways and did Country Cartel, didn't we? Yeah, it started to get a bit beefy, didn't it? It got real beefy, and I was like... Whoa, it got, got, yeah. got beefy. It got beefy, didn't it? And we're vegans. <laughs> <laughs> and it got all beefy. Yeah. it got a bit beefy, like... OK, oh, all right, well, we won't go down that route. Nobody, no, nobody no, likes we don't talking about, talk that. about yeah. that. But that's a good introduction into Country Cartel. Yeah, so Country Cartel was... Um, Fuck it. Well, it started with just me and Roscoe. Yeah. And then Dane. Why the name, first of all? Because it was like West Country fucking... Well, Tommy D would say something for girls. Yeah. Tommy and the whole D. cartel word. <laughs> Tommy, that was Tommy. around then, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Crew, click. What do you mean? It's like and we changed it to a K, cartel, like Corrupt FM. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? Eh? Like, when we changed it to a K, like Corrupt FM, yeah. they copied us, didn't it? So. Yeah, I must admit, Country Cartel, it was like, there's too many Ks, man. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. If they yeah. got one more, dude, I'm not befriending them. You, yeah, know, you know, it was one, it was one of them. That, that was one of the bars, wasn't it? Uh, on the KK, KK party, party not, not the, the KKK. 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 Yeah. yeah. It's the KK party, not the KKK. By the way, I was with Daniel the other day. Who's Daniel? Hibbs. Oh, yeah. Oh, who is it? Well, he was actually talking about embarrassing moments. Okay. Oh, okay. And it involved you two. Yeah. Oh, which one? <laughs> there was a festival. The Eminem one. No, but I do know something about that. Oh, there was a festival. All right, cool. Alice Park Festival. Oh, yeah. Lovely festival. Family. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a lyric that you lot chose to do. I don't know if you'd like to... Remind us. I can't Which remember it, man. Well, well, I can remember it. All of our um, lyrics were bad back in the day. Excuse me, and got us cancelled. Mum's not watching it. It was rape at the party. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just didn't really go down well. No, of course there not. There was mums and kids at the front. Yeah. Partying. Yeah. Obviously, we're grown now, and we realised that that was um, a bit distasteful for the time. But like comedians, yeah, it's. You can concentrate on on the title of the joke, yeah, or you can concentrate on the overall message, which was me and Jimson saved and found out. Actually, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what to <laughs> say, bro. That, that was, that was like <laughs> twenty eleven, right? Yeah, that was Eminem times. Was that before Eminem? Nah, that was like. What was that? Tyler, 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 Tyler times. Sort of like. So we f- were just pushing things to see what we could get away with, I Pushing guess. boundaries, yeah, yeah, seeing what you could fucking... And it was all creative. It wasn't like we were saying that we were going around doing those things. We were do you think, detectives. Do you think... Detectives? Yeah. Do you think going to an Eminem concert, leaving the hotel and leaving the towel on the light... <laughs> I've been talking to Skippy. Yeah. What happened? Uh, Percy, remember Percy, bruv? The black guy, remember we went to sleep? So, right. Blaming right, someone else right, now. Right. No, no, <laughs> yeah, not the way Skippy told did. me. So basically, this is what happened, right? <laughs> we, we all went to Dublin to go watch Eminem. Me, Jimson, Skippy and Hibs. So we all go. And uh, the first night we, we stay in the hostel, there's a girl in the bed. 
right? Ooh. And we're like, she's just on her own in the top bunk, and we're all fucked up, like coming back from wherever. And she's in there, and we're like, oh, fucking hell, that's a bit weird. So she like rolls over, goes to sleep. When Skippy woke up in the morning, he goes, mate, look over there now. And there was a black dude just led there, smiling, staring at us. And I think his name was Percy or some shit. Anyway, the day we leave to go to see Eminem, I was like, oh, my towel's wet. I'll throw it on top of the light. So I threw it on top of the light. We went out all day. Schoolboy era. Came back. Can you not remember the whole nah. fucking light thing? The, the whole thing had melted and it was on fire. Nah, I and can't Percy's asleep in bed and we didn't know whether he was dead. Nah, I can't remember that. Anyway, hopefully Percy's not dead. If so, rest in peace, Percy. <laughs> um, but yeah, we ran out. The, can you not remember? We nah. ran out of the hostel and didn't say nothing, blamed it on Percy. Nah. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Mate, you must have been fucked up off those ghosties, <laughs> bro. Those ghosties mate, yeah, actually no, I fucked. I have no knowledge of that. Another yeah. mate of yours is uh, Dino. Fucking hell. Yeah. I haven't seen Perkins? Dino for a while, man. Big up Dino Perkins. Yeah, Mad Duckling. Loves cooking yard food. Mm. Respect he? Dino. Dino, yeah, yeah, he loves it. Yeah. He said to me that one day, and I have to read it. Oh, it involves you. It probably... All these mad ones, me and Roscoe chasing seagulls around Bog Island at about <laughs> seven on a Sunday morning. Yeah, I remember that. Anything else you can... What, from that night? Was there an involvement of maybe elements of drink or...? Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> was, you, was you there that he, I remember he rocked up to Brendan's house for a morning with fucking paint in his hands, off his nut. Ew. Oh, no, <laughs> <I feel like. laughs> yeah. Basically mad shit. He TV, was man. fucked. And he's like, you know, let me in. This is about fucking six in the morning. <laughs> Look down the window, he's fucking out there. He's got these fucking buckets of paint. What the fuck are you doing out, you silly twat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So fucking, he's like, oh, let me in, let me in. He comes in. Yeah, mate, madness. Yeah, me and him kidnapped, um, oh, what's that kid's name? Oh, I can't remember his name now. Oh, kidnapped? F- yeah, me and him kidnapped his kid and threw him in the back of my mum's car at like four in the morning. that's a criminal act. And took him back to my sister's house. What's his name? And you know him as well. No, and don't walk with him. Nothing. I'm done walk with him. Leave him alone. Oh, no, Put okay. your hands away. Oh, what's his Kane? Kane. You know Kane Robinson. Kane. Yeah, I know Kane. Kane. Yeah, we kidnapped him. Big up Kane. Kane. Yeah, we kidnapped him, threw him in the back Kane. of my mum's car. I don't know why my mum. I don't know why my mum got involved. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went back, and Dino's being Dino, and I'm like, yo to hold it down. My mum's like sat there rolling around on the sofa, beating up Kane. He's got, what's it called, ain't he? Fucking Hank syndrome. Is it Hank syndrome? You know, like off of fucking me, myself and Irene. Oh, right. right like, <laughs> yeah. like, as soon as a bit uh, of Oh, uh, yeah, like, yeah. Who, Dino, 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 yeah. He's just like, has this switch for yeah. like, fuck it, only goes when he's like fucking Jim Carrey in the mask. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. 100%. Zero to 100, fucking yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah. I've got another story. Uh, it involves you, Jims. Yeah, man. One night, you and Skipton were out. Oh, fucking hell. It always goes wrong with him. <coughs> so this is what he said to me. I don't think I can do his accent, but I'll try. Go on. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. So, me and Jimson got fucking twisted one night, driving back and forth to get things. What would that be? Huh? What would that be? I remember... No, I'm telling the story, mate. Just, what does the get things mean? I don't know. <laughs> what were they doing? The 1234 remembers he's got work. 1234 will represent a swear word that I will not use. <laughs> so if they start again. Driving back and forth to get things. The 1234 remembers he's got work when he worked on the doors. OK? Mm-hmm. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. He couldn't get anyone to cover his shift at 6 a.m. He was fucking ringing everyone. So he gets changed and drives over himself and he's fucking spangled. (laughs) Some old couple come up to him and asked him a question. He gave an answer. The old lady turned round and said, you're talking absolute gibberish. (laughs) And then Skipton said, he was a mess (laughs) mine. And then he says, it's actually funnier when Jimson says it. Yeah. Do you remember that night? Yeah, I do. I do. <coughs> You're talking absolute gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> There's another fucking classic here. Yeah? I wasn't there, but I heard all about it. 
Jimson was at a wedding at Limpley Stoke Hotel. <laughs> he had a room. There was some artwork on the wall that he decided he wanted to steal as he knew an art dealer. He kept asking everyone if they had scissors. No, no, that was Brendan. That well, was it doesn't Brendan. say Brendan on my text. The Brendan was the one asking for scissors. And then I have a text. So let's see what the text says. Was it Jimson at Millie's wedding who wanted to steal the artwork from the room? Said he knew a bloke who might be interested in the artwork. <laughs> Amazing! The shitter was biting electrical cables, wasn't he? And then he kept asking anyone for scissors. Shitter, Brenda. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, Brenda, OK. Yeah, Is that what yeah. you call him? Yeah, shitter. OK, good friend. Good friend. <laughs> yeah, OK. Man. I have nothing else for you. Yeah, yeah. But I have something for you. Uh, I, know, I know what this is already. And I bet it involves fucking Brandy. Who's she? Uh, all right. Okay. Maybe, maybe it doesn't then. I know where he works. And I also know where you work. Yeah. Now, to get the golden ticket, mm. what's your relationship like with your fellow employees? Now, hold it there. Five out of ten will represent average. Ah. Uh. Seven out of ten will represent, yeah, man, everything cool. Mm. Nine and above <laughs> will represent exemplary. What's this? Sorry, my, my, I forgot. Go on. Number two represents piss poor. Right. And what's this? Say this again. Are you deaf? <laughs> <laughs> I have some scenarios for you. Yeah, come on. And I would like to know... Yeah. Who said these statements? All right, cool. You think you know? So, there's one gentleman I won't name, but he goes by a famous pose. Who would that be? Goes by a famous pose? This is the pose. <laughs> <laughs> when Ellie started, she was working there for three weeks. Yeah. What did you continually call Table her? wiper. Why? Because she wiped tables. She was vexed about that. And in her comment, she says, this man called me table wiper for three whole weeks because I didn't hear his instructions. <laughs> Who is a flannel-wearing fake vegetarian? What? A flannel-wearing... Wearing fake vegetarian. I'm unsure whether you are called it or you call somebody it. But I think the giveaway in it is the wearing fake vegetarian. It's probably Manal, isn't it? Exactly right for five points. Yeah, come on. But no, I don't call her a flannel-wearer, I just call her flannel. Is that her describing me? Okay, mate. If this story develops, keep it to yourself. I'm gonna poke her eye out. <laughs> How's the risotto? Now I'll punch Nicholas in the face. <laughs> Good five points. <laughs> Who is the B Tech Black Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Said by who? Probably him. Who is Maisie? Oh fucking! She's um, she's H. That's H. You know H, the little Mancunian rapper. That's what that's what she is. That's what no, she looks like. I don't. No, that's what she looks like anyway. You probably don't. She's not a twelve-year-old girl. Who said this? Mm -hmm. I hear you're going to Turkey soon. Hope that hairline's fixed when you come back. <laughs> I don't know, but my hairline's strong. I've got the strongest hairline in Podden. Freya, mate. Keep yeah, it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. Mate, all, all of you are having Whoa. it. Like, they're all having it when I get back to work. Watch. They all want now, smoke. Right, who said this? All right, come. Now, please, it just came through to the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's actually a MILF. <laughs> Jazz. <laughs> Five points again. Yeah. Green peas and rice. Oh, who, that's blasphemy, bruv. Who the fuck is saying stuff like that? 
Who's going to say things like that? Reef is your clue. Ah. Coral. Fossil. Yeah, fossil. And that is the end of your test. Yeah, nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, Those nice. are your workmates who, by the way, they did want to say that they really do respect you. Good. There's nothing like you as a boss, especially on your day off. Yeah, I know. It done, no, done, no. Done, no, done, no. He's they're, got they're, a day off. They're not a, like, I'd like to remind all of my colleagues, you're not colleagues, you're employees. Cracking the whip again. Mm. The tables have turned. One thing I want us to quickly do before we start talking some food. Mm. When doing your stuff with Country Cartel, which I will say was very successful, there was a lot of things I'd done with you, with Country Cartel, the K-Lounge and a lot of videos. Mm. You guys worked a lot with Chris from Candy Farm. Yeah. Please, can you tell us where that sort of association came from? Because you guys work really well um, and you guys have been working now for over... 10 years, maybe? I rang him before I met him because I knew who he was. I was window fitting at the time. So I rang him on my break. What day. significance does that have? It has no significance. I was just okay, uh, cool. ran that time. And it was yeah. YMP, I think, mm. before Country Girl. And I, that was the first meeting that I had with him. Was Chris actually doing video work nah, then? No, nah, no, nah. He was like doing his direct shit then. Do you know what I mean? He was doing just doing uh, some beats and stuff. Hip hop with Gwenny. Mex, aka yeah. Dead TBSI. Um, Johnny Soundscape. At the time, wasn't he? Um, and yeah, I went over a Delhi as well. D bars. Yeah. yeah. So I went over there one day when he was living over Cologne and just recorded over there and just, yeah, made friends with him since then. But it wasn't until 2012. Because prior to that, there was a lot of sort of. That, I think Country Cartel was the main breeding ground for how ex bouncing and your creativity can go. Mm. We were doing all sorts of You guys things. getting hungry? Yeah. Let's dig in. If you want to play up some stuff, we're talking. Yeah, yeah man. So that was like sort of the time when we kind of like started experimenting, creating and doing all sorts of fucking like, whatever. I mean, we had, it was me, well, it was predominantly me, Roscoe and Dane. Mm. But we had Chloe Wiley was in there at one point. Yeah. Toby Marsh was in there at one point. Young Saint, Lil yeah. yeah. Five yeah. was in there at one point. Yes. Yaz, um, Kev. and Yaz has carried on doing other stuff with you through there? the years, isn't she? Yeah, so I mean, like yeah. over the years, we had like people come in and out, but um, the even main, Hibs was just kind of even Hibs was kind of like an affiliate. Out, um, but like, who Hibs? Yeah, mm -hmm. he was kind of an affiliate, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, they had the J Road thing going on, but what's he up to he then, was... Hibs nowadays? Making babies, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. What are we about to tuck into? This is that looks very nice. Oh, I'll get into it. We'll get into it in a minute. Do you want me to hear? Yeah, yeah. 33 minutes. Food looks good, kiddo. Food looks good. But yeah, so Chris, like the first video we did was the one for the trailer for the retarded um, R&B one. Oh, right. Like, That's the one in. I voiced. Yeah, you're yeah, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're in the video. You were that? the guy with the, tor the, 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 the torturer. Slap Dane around the face, the electric oh, thing. Yeah. Did you were the bad guy. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, dog shite. So that, go. that was... <laughs> dog shite. I'm not sure if that was Chris's first video or not, but that was the first video we actually did with him. Was it? I think everyone was happy with it, though. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. like, to me, it was like, it wasn't a music video, it was like, just a trailer. Is that up there on YouTube somewhere? Mm, don't know if it is. is it? Don't know if it is. I've got it, though. I've got it. I can put it, I can insert it. No.
but yeah, the um, yeah, that trailer. It was uh, that was the first thing, and then New Day was the actual first music video. New Day, that was two thousand twelve. Was it was Lodos in that? Yeah, yeah. Lodos, you, Roscoe, and Dane, and Dane. Yeah, and then Finney was featured in it, didn't she? What's her name? Hannah Collins. Delhi's yeah. in the video as well, isn't he? Yeah, because Delhi, so Delhi's that. shooting with the fucking gun, but he's got, got the wrong eye open. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those... yeah, I do. So, he, so he's got his closed eye looking through the scope, and then the other one like, do, 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 do. Yeah, that was um, Hulk and Quarry, that was. Yeah. See, Chris with that, like, that just goes oh, to show, right? Oh, yeah. That that's the fucking guy's first video, right? And the fucking creative yeah. skills that he brought to that was yeah. fucking exemplary. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was fucking exemplary. It's like, how do I do that? How yeah. can I make that work? And then he did it. He didn't. He didn't say no. He didn't go. I can't do. Oh that. yeah. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> the mic's Dane and Delhi. Yeah, they, they were the army guys that they were doing the shooting. And you ripped something off the wall somewhere, didn't you? Yeah, that, that was, was Lodos, Lodos in... smashing up Lodos, Lodos, yeah. 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 But yeah, it was. Um, oh fucking whatever. With that, because what we did, we bought. It was actually my DSLR. I bought a DSLR. Yeah. We always said to him, I said, I'll buy a DSLR. You do the fucking videos, and we like we kind of went from there. Um, and yeah, that was the first music video. But prior to that, like, yeah, we linked with Chris as like through hip hop. A lot of your candy farm, oh, sorry, a lot of your country cast cartel videos were done by candy farm, correct? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, over the years, you guys kind of built up a very, very good rapport. So was it a situation of any time you had a video, was it just a simple call of Chris? This is my concept. Let's go again. Was it that easy towards the end? Pretty much. Um, well, not towards the end, but, but to where we are present day. The good thing with me, with me and Chris is we've got kind of got a relationship where he knows my taste. Yeah. Like, it's not like I've... Do you mean I don't ever have to go back to Chris? I may have to go back to Chris and say, just change that because I want something different. But then I, it's never like, mm, I don't like the style. I don't know what you've done. It's no, like, Chris is every, quality, yeah. I mean, he's, he, he knows... What we want. What we want. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um... And I think that's like, whether that's knowing someone on a personal level before or whatever, like, it, I suppose it's anything in it. You build a relationship with someone, you build a team, it's like... Mm. It's otherwise. trust, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's something that creative and that much that's gone into it. I think, you know, like, because I kind of, like, give him sort of, like, free reign because mm. he knows what I want. Kind of like if I'm approaching someone for music. If I want someone to be on my song, I don't want to give them too many instructions because I want them for them. Yeah, yeah. If you go to them and say, I want you to do this and do this You're and changing do this, them. It's like, You're changing them. Well, I don't fucking do that. Like, mm. If you want that, go fucking see Joe Block. Yeah. That's what they do, like, do you know what I mean? Mm. So with that, it's like the only one that I was meticulously detailed down, well, a couple, oh, daddy was kind of, but even more than that was I love you, baby. That yeah. That was fucking, well, you were there. You're in it. Like, mm. that was fucking scripted, fucking to the minute, like, do you know what I mm. mean? Um, that was like Reflections as well, the one I did. Yeah. That was like... That's actually... Reflections is actually my favourite video. Which is Reflections? Roscoe's video. My one. I do the hook on it. It's mm. actually a Roscoe video, but like... Chris's effects in that. Yeah, sick. Mm. He does like the arm coming out the tree, like holding the glass with the ice. Yeah, and throws it and fucking... Like his... Roscoe's little sister's in it and she starts like levitating. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has right. some, like half body, half horse, mm. like, some like American horror short, like, shit yeah. going on, like, do you mean? Was that your concept? Mm. Well, no. So the concept and the idea was obviously mine. But then obviously you see with the effects, I was like, I want, I was like, can you make like a hand come out the tree? And like fucking when I say glass, I, I think I say I've got rum on ice and I throw that like froze the like uh, the glass with the ice out of the glass and it turns into dice. Oh, right. And okay. it follows the lyrics. Yeah. And I was like, do you reckon you could do that? He was like, oh, I don't know. I might be able to. And then he did do it. And then he just, I was like, just go mad on the effects now. And he just did. Over the years, Went with in. Chris, have you seen him improve? Yeah. 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 <laughs> massively. And, like, his confidence improve. Yeah. yeah. Like, massively. Because it must be hard as well, because, you know, you're with a video and, you know, sometimes you're going to shoot people that you've never met before. Yeah. Mm. That must be really hard. Well, I know with Chris, like, I don't really want to, like, talk about, like, his, like... His, but I know he's had, like, troubles in the past of, like, not wanting to brand tank and go to places mm. or whatever, do you know what I mean? But, like, 
Roscoe said to see his confidence grow. He's working mm. with so many people now, like people like anyone, anyone. I see his Instagram um, at Candy Farm, at Candy Farm on Instagram, um, and he's always busy, always yeah. working. Um, yeah, man. The, the first lot of guys I used to know that he used to branch out with was young man there, Hearts from Bristol. Yeah, big up Hearts, man. Yeah, big up Hearts, and I think from there it's just grown on that side of the yeah, world. Yeah. And um, because that would have been after respect me, you were there for that, right? Respect me was when we went to, yeah, when we went to Bristol, Bristol. You noodles, no, hearts, yeah, me noodles and hearts, you noodles and hearts, yeah, 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 yeah. When um, when we put the camera on the bike, that's it, yeah, yeah. The, 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 what you call it, the in that park, the park skate yeah. park, yeah, yeah. So he's um, I seen Chris the other day, I spent four hours with him up at the top there. And he's 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 very creative. Yeah. But you get that with Chris, because even when you speak to him, he gets creative. Yeah. Just when you speak to him, and you just know that if that's the fundamentals of a video man, then that is great. You can see the cogs turning. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. You say something to him, you can hear them, you can see them, and then you, he's like, yeah. wow, Mark, Mark. And, and you know, he, he gets into one. Yeah. And when he gets into one, and it, when he says to you, oh, leave it with me, leave it with me. And then yeah. he comes you back know, two days you later. You know you're coming back to something magical. Like, go, and, he, and he start laughing on the phone, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he goes, hey, Mark. And then he just start laughing. He goes, yeah, I've done it. I'll send it across in a minute. And then when you see what he's done, it's like, yeah. Well, remember when he done Super Best Friends? Yeah. And like, AD blew his brains out. Yeah, yeah. Super Best Friends. Just the roots. And, uh, oh yeah! I want the ghost, and I do the heroin overdose mm. and all that, and I stab myself. Is that with the girl? When the yeah. girl's coming off the bed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. all yeah. die. But like, yeah, and it's like the the the, the gunshot to the head, loads of it. Yeah. Like, another blood, mm. and I was like, oh my god. I want to see? Like, fucking <laughs> out. But yeah, like then, like I mean, and he, he all these times for him, he would have been learning. He yeah. Was, like, mm. Every job learning for him. This is like the first of all these. Yeah, it's like when you are in my garage. And take off my mask, reality and then check. it's me underneath. Oh yeah, yeah. Then that one, them reality check, like, wasn't it? Oh, how are we gonna do this? Well, that... I know, I know, I know. Sound wicked. Reality Glad you do. <laughs> Let's go back, cause like, or are we forward? We're around there now, anyway, aren't we? Reality check. So that's like mm. 2014. So reality check. Let's just go back, cause that's a landmark. Yeah, that is. So let's. We, we were talking earlier about influences, and I was saying Tupac or whatever. So then, I would say around the early 2000s is when MTV base. And like MTV, remember when MTV was a music channel? Mm -hmm. Like, and I actually fucking played music, not like all this weird shit. Not the bullshit that they, they do now. But then you, they split off into like MTV it's Bass and all off that. as well, and Jerk Beans. And fucking MTV Bass, you had at the time, you had like Roots Maneuver, Black Twang on fucking MTV Bass. Like, fuck yeah. me, these guys are holding it down for yeah. fucking the UK. For the UK, hard. And it's like, yeah, sick. And like, that was like, Okay, you had like Rodney P, you had Task Force and all that around mm. that sort of time as well, like Kalashnikov. Do you know what I mean? But like, actually, that, Kalashnikov was like Channel U, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it comes slightly after, but like mm. still, like it was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, 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 it's sick. Yeah, wasn't it? like it's proper. But then that, I think that was my first taste into like, no, let's. We drop the accent. Drop the accent. <laughs> drop the accent. <laughs> drop let's the use accent. our own, do you man. Mean? Like, like, and then, um, yeah. So yeah, able to do that track with Black Twang. Yeah, that was. Um, that's like. A fucking, I still forget about it. And then when I go back, and then like people are like, oh, like who's Black Twang? And then you play them rotten, mm. and they go, oh. what? <laughs> what this tune? What this dude? Yeah. And then they see the video. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Black Twang man, like fucking legend. Yeah, big up big Black up, Twang man. man. Legend in what, UK hip hop. What do you reckon is the best track? you guys have done. Now, when I say track, I'm not involving the video. I'm just on about the audio. What, me and Jimson? You and Jimson. Yeah, bro. What, what, what? Oh. And it may be different. So you give me yours and tell me for what reason, and you give me yours and tell me for what reason. But I'm only looking at the audio at the moment. I will most probably ask you a video one after. <sighs> hey, cogs are turning. <laughs> cogs are turning. Don't worry, we're here from Rachel in a minute. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to think, man. Probably, um... While you're thinking, do you want to hear a story? Yeah, go on. The other week I went to Jimson's house. It turned up. Shani opened the door. Mm. All right, Marky. Sam's on his way back. Love it when she calls him Sam, cos, like, <laughs> no-one fucking calls him Sam. Yeah, funny. She goes, oh, we'll be here in a minute. So she offered me a seat. 
Never shows me the front room. Always puts me in the corner in the kitchen. Mm -mm. Bastards. She didn't get in the front room. No, next thing. I'm there for about two minutes. Shani doesn't offer me a coffee. So I say, oh, Shani, any chance for a coffee? <laughs> she goes, oh, yeah, 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 Marky, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, this humongous sound goes on in the corner. What's that? What, what coffee machine have you got in your eyes? Oh, that's just a normal coffee. For it the made the most horrendous Screech. noise. But then that was when the problem started. OK. Shani started to gas. Mm. Forgot oh, she's, totally. she's talking. Yeah, forgot totally oh. about the coffee. Oh dear. Ten minutes later, he walks in. Hello, mate. How's it going? You want a coffee? And I'm the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Shani, lovely girl, lovely girl. The hospitality shit. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it then. Best audio. Sorry, Shan. Best audio. I don't know, man. Dark Mist was good. Mate, I was so like Dark Mist was sick, and I like um. Mate, we've probably got new tunes that are fucking, like, probably the best shit we've done. Like, cause that's... I forgot we've got, a, like, half an album done. Yeah. Pretty much. Ah. I forgot about it. <laughs> I forgot about it. What's um, your that one? That other you one, you know, the freestyle one, where it was, like, me, you, Dane... Oh, who else is on it? There's quite a few of us on it. Over a dead TBS beat. Midnight. Yeah, that was fucking sick. That is a sick tune. That is a Midnight. sick tune. Yeah. That and and even Grey Sunday. Grey Sunday was that good. That was good. Uh, yeah, Midnight, that was on Dane's Caress My Hand Sweet Isle. Was it? Mm. Yeah, that was hard. Um, Super Best Friends was good. I, fucking, yeah, I, I, some of the new stuff. Yeah. That is... But that's hard because good. no one's heard it. Right. Yeah. So I'm just thinking of what people have heard <laughs> that you enjoy doing. <laughs> all the old tunes because I can't do them now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be yeah. fucked. And cancel. Cancel. <laughs> and what's the best video you feel Candy Farm has done for you? Reflections or Dark Mist? Reflections, Dark Mist. I'd say Dark Mist and then Reflections for me. I love you, baby. But then, yeah, you've got all them oh, ones. Oh, daddy. The one where you climb out of the fucking floor. The Shrink's Wet Dream. Yeah, that's fucking sick. And that one was so simple and so effective. Yeah. Um, the stuff with the candy farm, the darker stuff. Yeah. Because I know Chris has got, like, he's into his horror shit. Yeah. He loves it. He loves... When someone comes to him and says, I want to make something which is a bit fucking horror. Or well, action, he just loves it, innit? Yeah, that's his thing. So, like, you go to him with ideas, like, like Dark Mist, that's fucking... Yeah, horror. Dark Mist is that sick. Video is like, do you mean? I watched that the other day, actually. Um, someone, yeah, someone said, you play a murderer too well. And I was like, oh. <laughs> something that was said so to do me, you. <laughs> something that was said to me earlier in the week. Um, what's his name again? Taylor, Jack, Newport, Bowen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said, handbag girl. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about that the other day as well. Thanks for that, Taylor. By the way, Taylor's now a barman. The most scruffiest barman I've ever seen. Of course. Um, but yeah, he was talking about that. Yeah, I, think I don't know time, why. I don't know why. At the time, I, I do remember the time. <laughs> at the time, there was a lot of there was a lot of vibe around that because Past we used a, we used a nightclub, uh, didn't we? Pino, we used uh, the the um, the egg in it. Yeah. No, we wasn't the egg. We, yeah, yeah, we, we used yeah, the egg. Yeah, we used the egg and somewhere else, didn't we? It was over two days. Wasn't it Malloy's? Was it Malloy's? Nah, that was for the, the little thing outside. That was that the little thing, bar that, festival um, thing. Do you want some more? Oh, day? that was that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, my mistake. But Handbag Girl, I think there was a lot of people involved because obviously yeah, you had to there get was. Some dancers in yeah. and stuff. Yeah, there was. And I think after it was done, for weeks people kept saying, So when's Handbag Girl coming out? When's I've never got it back. I've never seen that video. <sighs> I don't even Who want to shot talk. It? I don't want to talk about uh, that. Who shot it then? Omar. Yeah. Who? Omar. I've never seen that video. Politics, bruv. Said the car drive was corrupted and you lost it. Last I heard. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. But that... That video would have been sick. It's like fucking <laughs> cringe factor. It was, yeah, but it was, it, was, <laughs> it was the time. The timing and, like, that was my first experiment with auto-tune. Yeah. And oh, like, right, oh, yeah, okay. shit. Yeah, yeah. I can make people sing. Like, do you yeah. mean, this is like... Melodyne. This would have been before Melodyne. fucking... Was it, did it, uh, it, was a, it was around T-Pain time. Around T -Pain. It was T-Pain times, because yeah. Lodos did the remix to... 
yes. unsprung, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it was at that time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was exactly that. This, this is what I'm saying. We were there. We were there on so the that, curve. That for me was tools in the arsenal yeah. of learning. Yeah, of and course. Yes, mm. Like I said, why I say create a country cartel was the most creatively expansive. Because it was like so fucking like, mm. what are we gonna do now? Like, do you know I mean, like, we do that. Let's just make this. We can do whatever. There was we no want. where YMP. We where not. I was mentally was I want to make music like those guys there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There Country was no Cartel, limitations there was like, at it all. Was like, what should we make? Yeah, what, yeah, what are we yeah. gonna do? We can Let's do anything. Do we can do what we want. Yeah, yeah. Just excitement. Of yeah, doing yeah. Because yeah. um, to be honest, you guys at the K Lounge, K Lounge was mate, the place that, that these guys had. For Country Cartel, <laughs> it was their base. In, that was the in place, time. Rav. That period And of time. to be honest... That was the best. To know I've that, got videos, you know, from well, then. Just to know that you can go into one place and mm. there's everything that you want yeah. to do music must have been... You know, I wasn't a music man like you lot. I followed you and I, mm. I passed through, but... If Mate, I we had a whiteboard man, and everything. Yeah, that was it. You, <laughs> well, you had organisation there as well. Right. You, it was like you took it to another level. You, you know, everybody's on the street level with their mm. hip hop and their, and their spitting. But then you lot took it to where I was seeing it into another level, where mm. you found an area to work. You had a system. You had a plan. You had a whiteboard. You were trying to be organised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And for me, most of the time they had weird pictures. For me on to look at some of you guys as younger lads saying, "Well, okay." They're getting their shit tight. Mm. That's good to see. Because a lot of me growing up, I saw a lot of people who had the dream and that was all. Mm. Never wanted to be, you know, get on it and, and, and get professional. And you lot were getting semi-professional with it. Mm -mm. Don't know what happened at the end. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I do want to talk about the third member, though. Dane. Dane. <laughs> yeah, man. No, man, because I rated Dane. Dane's yeah, hard. I rated One of the Dane, hardest man. lyricists, man. It. Mate, I'm telling you. One of it's the, the track he done with the melon. Yeah. Mate it, was, mate, it was all, most porn. of the Dragon tracks porn. that or was he did. was it the wifey one? And which was the one when he's <laughs> yeah, in... Yeah, the wifey one was the melon one. In Somerset Place, when he's in the robe with the girl and that. Oh, that's Mary... Uh, Adriana. 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 Yeah. That, that's, that's another one of my favourite C-Double videos. Yeah, that, See, that, that, that video. That was a that favourite. That was actually the, the first, first video. The first video, yeah. That came that before New Day. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And it was hard. That was hard. Mate, hey, that, that video is one of my favourites, like, actually. We were, like, we were like, how do we put tits in a video and make it arty? Yeah. How do we get, how do we get away of putting tits in a video? You put, you put we did it. face over the nipples, wasn't it? No. Nah. Over the face. No, she had that was in the picture. That was it. She had the gas yeah. mask. Yeah, but didn't you put the smileys over her nah. nipples as well? Nah, it's, it's still there. Man. Still Flesh there. Titties there. Yeah, they were, they were out, was it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. All in the name of art. Yeah. All in the name of art, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was That's artists. not what Epstein would have said, but yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, yeah, that video. That was a hard video, he, bro. Because he, he managed to get the, the room, the, the fucking, it just been done. It was a showroom. It was a yeah. showroom. Fucking yeah. massive, like, mansions, innit? It's like, yeah. Because I, used... I remember allegedly um, getting Dane very, very, very intoxicated for that video in the park. I was like, no, do more, do more, do, do more. You need <laughs> to do up. more, you need to do more. And he was just like, I can, I can. I was like, you need to be in the right frame of mind for the video, because it was about weed. What, what did you push down in weed? I don't know, allegedly he was smoking weed. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah, from your hand. You have to method act in these situations and get the best out of the artiste. You know what I mean? Away from music. Away from music. I know you've got a family. Mm -hmm. You got anybody right now? What? Uh, girlfriend, partner. I've got a. I've got an. I've got a nice one. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take it back way before the missus. Mm. Way before your partner. Mm. First girlfriend. Yeah. There's three categories. Right, okay. <laughs> Minging. Yeah. Something to practice on. Yeah. Something to be shared. What? <laughs> what do you mean, bruv? What do you mean? Are you on about mean. Shag, Mario Avoid, but to what you just said? <laughs> I don't think you'd be fucking. Well, I probably. I know my girlfriend. Like, proper, yeah, like I know my first yeah. for girlfriend was. So. Didn't really have to call names. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> didn't really have name, to call names. Right? It was just the department you were putting it in. But no, you can forget that one now. Bleep it out. 
<laughs> yeah, bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, bleep it out. <laughs> okay. Right, um, what minutes we on? <laughs> Don't worry, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna lose this. <laughs> Mine got lip read anyway. So, out of the three departments, your first one was what? Go for the first department. Go through what, the department. What categories again? again? What do I get? Minging. It was minging to practice on <laughs> or to be shared. But you could, any of them is savage, bro. <laughs> I'm not the one answering, so I don't really care. <laughs> so practiced on? Yeah, of course. Yeah, good. That's the only yeah. thing you can say, really. <laughs> can Fingers, say, toes. Yeah, you can't say any of the others, because you and can't say a girl's minging. You know what I mean? To practice All on. All right, then throw, throw in your fourth. Throw in your fourth. I've used three. Give no, me no, fourth. to practice on, I would say, is pretty much to learn from. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, and I think if you learn from every relationship you go into, you'll and grow you, as a you'll, person. Yeah, yeah. See how we saved that? Fucking nigger! Fuck you know. All right, fair play. That's fair play. <laughs> Two kids, yeah? Mm -hmm. Two kids. Another thing I noticed when I came to your house, um, obviously, schools are open, mm. but your son was there running around. Yeah, yeah. He was supposed to be ill, Sam. Yeah, yeah. What sort of parental guidance is that, mate? Free spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Shani, gassy. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realise he hadn't gone to school. <laughs> didn't even realise. What's he still doing upstairs? <laughs> now. Why didn't you go to school, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Forgot. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is our rage. Mm. Who is Rach, Sam? Big That's up Rach, mother. mate. Big up Rach every Big up day. Rach. All right, Rach. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's done to me. But what she's done, she's given me a little account of what you were like as a youngster. Prick. <laughs> she didn't go that far, but you'll know where she was going. So, via Chantel. Hi. Here are some actions I could think of. There are probably loads, but I can't think of any at the moment. I should have asked Denny. I bet she has some. <laughs> Who's Denny? My auntie. Your auntie? Yeah, man. Here we go. Number one. <laughs> when Sam was two or three, after swimming at the sports center, he was running around naked and <laughs> bending down to look into the lockers, <laughs> probably looking for coins left behind. <laughs> when suddenly he did the biggest bottom banger you have ever heard. As I looked down at the cute little boy, he said oops, as he had actually exploded poo all over the floor. Yeah, yeah. Ah, come Big on. Big up to my past self. <laughs> Big up, Rach. Yeah, art. See, art from young. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was number one. Number two. Hey. How Ready? many are there? <laughs> That's quite a lot. Five. Five. Come right, on. But mum loves you. When Sam was five, we took him to see Santa Claus on the train at Avon Valley Railway. While we were waiting in our carriages to be called to see Santa, we were doing some colouring and we were given mince pies. Sam didn't like mince pies. He left his on the table. <laughs> when Santa actually came walking through the carriages and stopped to speak to Sam, believe it or not, Sam was quite shy and he was also a little bit scared of Santa. So he thought instead of talking with Santa, he would ram the mince pie down Santa's mouth until he nearly choked and then spat it out on the table. Not sure what Santa thought, but we all thought it was very funny. Creative. Yeah. Number three. <laughs> when Sam was around five, a lot of things went wrong around five. That's where I went downhill. He used to stay with his Auntie Mandy. Oh, yeah. Who's that, Auntie Mand? Yeah. All right, Mand. <laughs> when I went to work. When I went to pick him up, he was so excited that he had learnt to ride his bike without stabilisers. He jumped onto his bike and made sure I was watching <laughs> to show off his new skills, and he did that classic... Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and rode straight into a hedge and fell off and started crying. We all felt sorry for Sam, but it was still funny. <laughs> <laughs> when Sam was 13, 14, he was supposed to be staying at a friend's house in Bath. I got a telephone call from him round about 10 o'clock saying he didn't feel very well and could I come and get him? Unfortunately, Rach was on the piss, so she couldn't come down and get you. But, I was, but she was really worried and wanted you home. 
so she ordered you a taxi. Thirty minutes later, Sam arrived home and comes to the door with his fleece rolled up in his arms and said, here's a present for you. As I unwrapped the fleece, sick <laughs> fell out. <laughs> Sick <laughs> fell out of the fleece <laughs> and onto the floor. He wasn't ill. He had been drinking alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good old Rach. Here's, Here's a, a present <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Oh, shit. Number four. Oh. When Sam was eight, he was playing a rugby match at Devizes. He got tackled or hit by the opposition and he saw red. <laughs> He got up and chased the opponent all around the pitch while the game was still in play <laughs> until, he could, until he could hit him back. It was like a comedy sketch. They were running one way and the game was going on in another direction. He got sent off in the end. Again, it was funny to watch. He has always been a determined person. <laughs> I remember that. It was. It was like the ref was chasing me with a whistle blowing up. Yeah, I'm going, fuck off, Jack Nassie! Trying to smack him. Did you get him? Yeah. <laughs> See, I just did. He's running away. All I'm trying to do is hit this kid. This ref chased me. <laughs> stop, stop. I'm like, fuck off! Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no way I was staying on that pitch, mate. <laughs> Last but not least. When Sam was four... We go back again. When Sam was four, we lived in a first floor flat. Oh, uh, poor dog. What was the dog's name? Muppet. We decided to get a puppy. Fuck. Muppet the puppy was so cute and Sam adored her. But one day I popped to the toilet and on my return Sam was leaning over the balcony. Panic set in that I was a bad mother and he could have fallen over. However, it wasn't Sam I should have been worried about. He had thrown Muppet the puppy over the balcony. <laughs> I asked him why he did this, and his response was to see if Muppet could fly. <laughs> he has always needed to find out things for himself. <laughs> By the way, Muppet was OK. <laughs> she was, do you know what, right? Thanks, Rach. Oh, oh, shit, I feel bad. I thought it died. Nah, I was man, still laughing like Muppet, that. Muppet, like, lived oh. until I was... So Muppet lived to the age of 19. Was it a girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a first floor flat? First floor flat. <laughs> oh. But Muppet, Muppet lived until, until I was 19. Bless. And when she died, that fucking broke my heart. Yeah, I bet it did. Like, that was like, yeah. from then, yeah. what do you mean? She got ran over. 19. 19. got ran over at Whiteway. Mad. Um, fucking, yeah. Muppet. Mate, she fucking lived through the wars. Bless her. What type of, type of dog? Cockapoo. Mm, oh, yeah. cross. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little black fucking shaggy scruffy thing. Mm. Rest in peace, Muppet. Rest, Rest in, in peace, peace Muppet. Muppet. Yeah. Yeah, man. You got any for him? No, I haven't. Because my source let me down. Mate, my mum would have given you fucking loads. I know, I should have done it myself, but I trusted somebody to do it. Good old Candy Farm. <laughs> <laughs> and he let me down. Um, but there is something else I want to speak to Roscoe about. Because sometimes I go over to Roscoe's. Sometimes me and Roscoe talk music. But I don't really tell Roscoe the truth. I go there for food. Yeah, I know. Because you're a very, very good cook. So one thing I really wanted to ask you is, where did this cooking side of you come from? Who influenced you? <coughs> Who taught you? Mm. And, dude, why are you so good at it? Um, I don't know. I like being creative. So, like, it comes from there but like it originally it come from my dad yeah and the smells that he used to be able to create in the kitchen caribbean dude man that's what i mean you know how it goes and it was like from earlier it'd be like i'd go in the kitchen and be like oh there's nothing to eat and he'd be like what do you mean i'd be like there's nothing to eat there's nothing in the cupboards there's nothing in the fridge he'd be like there's a tomato there there's a there's a tin of tuna there yeah it makes there's up. a this boom and then he used yeah. to come up with these mad meals and i'd be like what the fuck Little did I know, my dad was on bank, but we lived like we were poor. <laughs> so he was still like, I was eating like corned beef and all these type things from young. Obviously, I don't eat none of that sort of stuff anymore. Um, but then he, I never spent time with him in the kitchen. It was the smells. Right. So like, he never taught me nothing. Like, so mum taught you? No, she can't cook for shit. Sorry, she man. can't cook, man. She's dead at cooking, bruv. Like, Sorry, man. If she was ever cooking, I was upset. 
I want on it. Get some more of that pasta. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, my dad, so dad does the all cook. the cooking. Yeah, my dad's the okay. cook. Like, my mum cooks, but she cooks at basic level, like, do you know what I mean? Entry but, level. Yeah, but my dad cooks. Beat it. Then my granddad now, my granddad, I always grew up thinking it was all my granddad. Gran. Dad's dad, dad's yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, no, the dad's black, dad. The black side. Yeah, all right. Um, he was, I always thought it was my grand that did the cooking, mm. but it wasn't. It was my granddad. Mm. Um, so my granddad's food was next level as well. Is he still about? Nah, he's no? passed, okay. unfortunately. Um, but yeah, he, he, he was like an inspiration. He was just an inspirational man anyway. Um, like his whole story is pretty, pretty interesting. Man. Like how he came over here and stuff. It all is, mate. It is mad interesting. How did he come over? Through the forces? Um, like, nah, he was a mechanic. So he was like one of the only... Um, he was like one of the only mechanics in the country that could work on red buses. Right, okay, yeah. So he was pretty like, do you know what I mean? Special, so to speak. Where did he live? In the West Country? Down there? I think, well, I think they originally were in London and then mm. they moved up here. Yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure. But um, then, who kind of taught me how to cook and put flavours together was a dude called Richard Husband. Remember Rich? Remember yeah, man. So I used to work with him at Asda. Mm. Um, and yeah, when I lived really in Bristol. Misses, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel. And, uh, Not another one. Yeah. <laughs> they all got stories, aren't they? Yeah. Rachel's. <laughs> so yeah, we worked in Asda together. He was like a butcher or whatever yeah. on the butchery department. And then like, I ended up leaving Asda because he went and worked for this wholesaler and he was like, come work with us. I was like, fuck it, all right. Just better money or whatever. But he was like a really fucking good chef. Like really good chef. Two dudes jumped on his back in the kitchen. He collapsed and shattered both of his kneecaps and he could never work in, in that trade again. Because he's standing. Or... Yeah, yeah. So he, just, he couldn't stand jumped anymore. On what? Pissing about? Yeah, just jumped on his back, like taking a piss. He collapsed, landed on his kneecaps, shattered both his kneecaps couldn't stand doing those long hours ever again. So he had all of this experience. He lived to be a chef. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He started teaching me things. And like, I just started getting a passion for He taught me how to use a knife properly. And like, he taught me how to put flavors together. So where were you coming from? Were you coming from literally not knowing anything? No, or, I knew, I or, or coming from a little bit of the basics that you got from dad? Yeah, I could, I, I just, everything, most most things that I make, I just kind of guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, as an example, this this pasta that I made. So I never used banana blossom mm. until about a week ago and mm. used it for the first time. It's just sat in my in my drawer for for months and months and months. And I was like, right, I'm gonna fucking try and use it. Mm. So I was like, I want to make it taste like tuna. So I used nori, which is um, seaweed, like the stuff that you wrap um, sushi in. Right. Yeah. So that tastes like the sea. I had some vegan fish sauce, um, spring onion, red onion. I used a little bit of um, green chilies that were in vinegar and used the vinegar from the chilies mm. to make it a bit more like mm. tangy. Um, cooked it down with miso um, and stock. And then, yeah, and then pretty much made a pasta sauce from scratch and then made the bake. Was it the cooking that you were doing that turned you off meat? Or no. did you just want to give up meat anyway? I, I gave, originally I gave up pork because when I was working at that place with and, that dude. And why I ask you that question yeah. is because a lot of people that I know that mm. have given up meat, mm. it's because they've turned to start cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've kind of cooked the meat and then thought, no, I can go without it. Yeah. And then they've gone without it for a few days and then they've made it into a routine. Now the, cook, the, the meat thing was... um. When I was working at that wholesaler mm. with that dude, he was a massive meat eater. Every day I was having fried breakfast. Not fried, but like, like, do you know what I mean? The fucking curbside dudes are on the grills and that. So yeah, yeah. bacon, egg, sausage, black pudding, them things Cholesterol. every day. Cholesterol. Bro. And I was like, I can remember it went on for a bit. And then I was looking at my boss who was also doing it. And he was smoking 80 fags a day, super kings, yeah? And eating these things. And he's he's already had two heart attacks. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, nah, like, I need to stop eating pork. Because if I stop eating pork, there's no cooked breakfast for me. Mm. I just have to have fruit or something. Yeah. So I stopped eating pork. And that was when my cousin, 
my cousin come out of well he went he went on holiday for a, quite a long time and what, then with came steel out, doors yeah all oh, right cool he came out back from holiday and was muslim and oh, he I'll started see. preaching to me bad. yeah <laughs> <laughs> he started preaching to me about pork and that and then it was at the same time as well it all kind of was at the same time is me and dane did um a workshop at the Fiat Royal and the Egg with Akala. Mm. And I remember we were like... The we, Akala. The Akala, yeah. Mm. So we were like all talking and he was like, oh yeah, we'll go for a break now. I'm like, cool. He's like, where are you man going for food? And we were like, McDonald's. And he went, I was like, you coming? And he was like, ah, nah, you're all right. And he started laughing. Yeah, then yeah. he started telling us about... Well, go on. Things. So it was like, it all kind of coincided with that. And then... I was like, do you know what? I'm going to just try and be veggie for a bit and just stop eating. Like, But it started with like beef because I never really ate beef that much anyway. So mm. I stopped beef, stopped pork like ages ago. That was the first thing to go. Then beef, then lamb, and then fish. No, then chicken, chicken. and then fish. And then I just went on and off, on and off for two years. Mm. Then allegedly I had an experience where I thought I was dead. Um... And I thought everyone I knew was dead and it was the end. And I was just consciousness with the creators. And when I eventually came back from this alleged experience, mm -hmm. the first thing I seen, it was springtime. Mm -hmm. I was with Costa actually. Mm -hmm. um, it was springtime. There was like little lambs galloping through the meadow as the sun was setting. There was calves, baby ducklings following their mum on fucking streams. I started crying and was like, I can never eat a sentient being again. And that's it. Fair play. So that's, that's it. But obviously you have to make food taste better when you don't. I think, Do you know what I, mean? I think there's a lot of people out there that would like to give up meat <clears throat> yeah. and like to eat healthier. But I think what's stopping a lot of people is their knowledge behind it. Yeah. So one thing I'm going to ask you here now is what was one of the first meals that you cooked for yourself that was vegetarian, that was simple to make? Steamed veg, rice and peas. Beans on toast. <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> you don't do them thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but steamed veg, carrots. Yeah, mate, steam. So literally, whatever vegetables you like, throw it in a pan, tiny little bit of water in the bottom of the pan, St let it steam, mm. throw the vegetables in, whatever you want. Herbs, spices, I usually use jerk and that. Use a little bit of jerk seasoning, some balsamic vinegar, olive oil if you want to use oil. Nothing to don't. replace the meat, it's nah, just, just dealing just, with the veg. Just the vegetables, like, and just kind of like, almost not stir fry, but you just steam it, mm. and then some rice. Black pepper, a little bit of salt, yeah. jerk, jerk seasoning. It's easy. It's a change of mindset, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it people is. think that you need a portion of meat or protein on your plate, mm. but you don't. On a it's like, they have the whole myth about protein deficiency. Do you know they haven't got any records because there's never been anyone to study protein deficiency on because it's really fucking hard to become protein deficient. That's mad. Yeah. Because they're like, it, yeah, that's mad, bro. It's, 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 look, me personally, I eat meat. Mm. But you know, sometimes I come yeah. to yours yeah, yeah, and yeah. I eat some meals there right. and it's like, wow, mm. dude, I would love to. But it's what happens when you're hungry in town and you're passing McDonald's and you're passing Burger King. It's you eat. carry on walking. No, no, but the thing is, <laughs> no, but the thing is this, is, this is what I mean. If, Move if, Brighton. If, if, yeah. if these vegan yeah. shops and vegetarian shops were in your face, like what your McDonald's and your Burger yeah. King. Well, they're, all, they're all doing it. They're starting it, yeah. to now. Yeah, they're doing it now, yeah. aren't they? Like, you got like Leon, that's probably like the biggest fast food chain in it, which you're like, it's fresh food, but it's fast food. Mm. So, um, but I was, I was down in Brighton at the weekend and the fast food places down there, vegan, vegetarian fast yeah. food places in Brighton, it was fucking, we had this vegan kebab on Friday night. And fucking, yeah, that was banging. Mm. Um, a mushroom truffle burger. Fucking. With banging. Like, oh, yeah, it was rude. Like, mm. like, yeah. I mean, there's more and more of these places popping up. Yeah. yeah. Like, and even the, the places, like you say, McDonald's and, and these places are the starting to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, fucking <laughs> touch them things. Do you think there's a lot of room and a lot of scope for people to make their own ingredients and their own meals in vegan? There is, but it's, it's, it's like, so as an example, 
this, not this, because that was not that bad, but the, the pasta thing, it's like you can, with me, I like, I've all, even when I was eat, eating meat, mm. I've always loved the process. Yeah. And I've always put love into food. Mm. So it's like, I was up at five this morning making that tuna to go into just a tuna pasta bake. Mm. Like most people just open a can. Open a can, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you, there's oh, some things. Oh, you fresh tuna, yeah? No, that's obviously banana blossom. Banana blossom. Oh, right. Okay. Turn into oh, tuna. Turn into, yeah, yeah. So at the, it's a flower, the flower that grows out banana. the bottom of the banana tree. Right. So it comes out the bottom. It's like a big purple flower. And you peel off the things in it. It's weird, bruv. It, when you empty a can of it <laughs> into a bowl, it already looks like a fucking sea creature, bruv. Right. Wow. Like, like, it looks weird. Cause Easily I'd, accessible. Yeah, like yeah, Waitrose, Sainsbury's. Yeah, Sainsbury's now, I think. All them places you can get it all there. So, like, when you pour it out, it looks like that. Wow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wow. But, yeah, I've got the whole process on there. I'll send it to you. Um, but, yeah, it's all about putting love into the cooking, man. But you can obviously go to the shop now, where it's so accessible with... Pe more and more people going vegan or vegetarian, mm. you can go and buy all this stuff pre-made. So yeah. it's like, it is like going in and you can go in and buy mincemeat and make yeah. m make what you want. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's easier now than it was when I first, <laughs> when I first did it. But I still rather do the long process of doing it all myself because you know what's in it then you, as well. Are you one of those cooks that like to cook for people or just yeah. really cook for yeah, yourself? Yeah, no, I like. I don't like cooking. I cook for myself and bruv, half of it gets wasted. It pisses me off. So how many, what's the most people you've ever cooked for? Like 20. Serious? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. No, that's good. But it's like, I, f I find it easy because it's always like, when I, when I did the 20, it was like sweet potato, uh, roasted roots. Um, jerk jackfruit burgers, coleslaw, easy. All right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Sim simple things, man. That people can. It's just a lot of people find it a lot harder because of the numbers. Not necessarily scaling the scaling the meals bigger. Yeah. Just frightening because it's the numbers. I oh, know. I don't care about. And stuff then people like that. fear that. Oh, I've got twenty people. Maybe I've cooked and I've only cooked for seventeen. And then yeah. it's that fear because that, that's I the always fear cook, that I would. Have. I always cook too much in it. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's one. Do you know what I mean? And then you got leftovers. That's 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 the. But then you got leftovers. That's my problem. I've always got fucking leftovers. No, but leftovers is good because even it's like, like in my yard, it, if, if if like yeah, my girl's cooking, yeah. mate, I hate that thing. <laughs> what? Why? What's wrong with you? Bubble and squeak. What? But you like fish and chips and not jerk Bubble chicken. And Queaky, because like, <laughs> they offer me that, you know. Who, say, who, yeah. who offered you that? No, no, like <laughs> if someone offered me no. that, I'd tell them, shut up. No, 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 I won't go rude. I won't go rude. But I know, I know, like the English tradition, the English tradition. What is it, bro? It's that, it's and then the it's the leftover veg. Dinner. So you're leftover right. veg for roast dinner. You muck it, make and it, and then like they put it all into one. Hash brown. Should I cook yeah, like a hash that sounds quite nice actually. Yes, yes, but they put right. it, yeah, but it's the name. Yeah, I'm not Bubble happy about the name. It's change it, squeak. change it, change it. Bubble Bubble rename squeaky. it. The, rename it now. The, the dish itself <laughs> is nice. It's your leftover yeah. veg from your roast that you just make into. Like and and let me tell you what they have on top of it: <laughs> a fried egg. What are they up to, bro? I don't know, dude. Who's up? To, who's whose creations this? No, I ain't naming names. I'm just saying it's out there. I'm gonna blame. Sk I reckon it's Skippy, man. <laughs> <laughs> People are out there. People, People eat it. People right. love bubble and squeak. They yeah, love it. That's mad. Me, I've tried it, and it's like, <laughs> what's the biggie? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, just fucking trying to get rid of your leftovers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Trying to rave about it. Yeah, it's oh, not cool, man. Can't wait to get when I've been bubbling and squeaking tonight. Fucking hell. Shout out to that bubbling and squeaking, Fuck it up. Bubbling and squeaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, oh, dude. What a name, man. Yeah, it's average at best. But it's all right, like you said. <laughs> It, it provides another meal the day after and it saves people going into their pocket, I suppose. Well, I was, because I asked my stepdad the other day, I said, fucking, like, <laughs> well, how, what was meat consumption like then? And he said, like, what they used to do. Well, back in the day. Now, right, okay, he yeah. Said, he said, what they used to do, so they used to go, you know, buy your joint of beef on a fucking Sunday. Mm. On the Monday, you would have cold cuts of fucking sliced beef. Yeah, yeah. And then on the Tuesday, you'd use the same joint and you'd fucking make a curry that up or and make like a 
fucking mince meat, like yeah, cottage yeah. pie or fucking something. Like yeah, all right, from the yeah. same joint. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you'd have that three days. That three days worth. Yeah. There's no like fridge and fucking freezer to fucking keep it for, mm. for God knows how long. Do you know what I mm. mean? But yeah. It's mad, like rice as well. So like, I remember growing up and, and we'd, my dad would make a massive batch of rice mm. and then freeze it or put it in the fridge or put whatever. Fridge, yeah? yeah. And I can remember one day I was, I was at someone's house and I, I had, it was like a thing like this. And I put, I put it in the microwave or whatever. He's like, you can't reheat rice. I'm like, <laughs> was like, what do you mean you can't reheat rice? If you can't reheat rice, you could get salmonella, you die. Who said like, that? An undisclosed white person. And I was like, it's fine. I've been cool. doing it my whole life. I'm sure I'll be all right. And then my dad Left turned around, Chinese right? In the morning. And yeah. he said that back in Barb's, they used to do the same thing, like on a massive fucking massive pot mm. over fire. They didn't have a fridge. They didn't have no fridge. Like, we used to eat from it for like five days. Yeah. Five days, yeah. He was like, we were all fine. Sometimes even the rice has gone hard. Yeah, I know. They're <laughs> still eating it. <laughs> it's, Mad. It's, it's one of these things, right? Scientifically, that person is correct. Yeah. It does develop a bacteria. After yeah. a half but, an hour at room temperature. Yeah, but... Come on, now. But on a humanitarian ground. I mean, let, let's, let, let, let's think about it. Like, fucking, it's like, uh, too much of this can do this. It's like, yeah. 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 Anything was... Just like anything. Doing, yeah. yeah. It's, just do you mean, like, the, the amount of times out. I've reheated fucking... And if you nuke like, it... Do you mean stir fry and fucking rice in the morning yeah, from the yeah, Chinese? Yeah, yeah. That's already been Dude, reheated yeah, by them. Yeah, by them. <laughs> now I'm putting that in a microwave. Yeah. Dude, like, I'll go yeah, for food the next day and Holly would have thrown it. And I'd go, oh, where's the food? Oh, Mark, that's gone. No, it hasn't. No, it's fine. Nah, man. I've woke up with pizza on my bed and it. Yeah. Like, literally on my pillow and just... Cold pizza's like Probably will throw yeah, anything out the day team. after. She'll yeah. just throw it out. Wow, that's a waste of food, Yeah, man. man. Wait, do you know, food waste is one of the biggest uh, issues that we have for, like, me. in this... Like, so you better eat up, gentlemen. You better eat up. Oh, uh, my dad's been already calling that as well. The pasta, he's like, I want some. Oh, you want some of it? Yeah, you got to take yeah. some down? Yeah. Fair play. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, last but not least... Plans for 2022. What plans do? First of all, plans as a team, as Country Cartel. First of all, on the music side. What's the plans there? So 2022 is 15 years since Tag Team Partners Volume 1 was released. Yeah. Tag Team Partners Volume 1. Mine and Roscoe's first ever joint mixtape. So to celebrate that milestone, what are we going to do? Tag Team Partners Volume 2. Volume 2 is coming. Okay, cool. Uh, That'd be September. Just, just, uh, just an album. Any videos with any of the tracks? <coughs> yeah. yeah, but like I, I, I want it to be a natural. Um, I'd love to capture the same magic from then, but like how we are now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like back then, you, Ooh, you know, you know, that's you, gonna be hard. You, you know how you did like the hosting on things. Yeah. So we hosted tag team partners for you. So we, you want to host it again we, as you lot now? Yeah, so we hosted yeah. it ourselves then. That was the first thing we did. And it was like, that was what was different about ours. Like, the commentary. And it was like, we're like fucking yeah. slacking each other off with that in between the tracks, just talking, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that the same way you would do part two? Yeah. I'd like to. Yeah. Like, even if we did it podcast style. Yeah. Take the tracks and just fucking talk to live without, between them, like, on the show. Yeah. Um, I think the slagging off you wouldn't be able to do that. No, now, not so much, but like, you're like slagging off, it was just like it was like Joe fucking out, Roscoe, fucking, Roscoe, off fucking each other. there, there, there. Yeah, yeah. Like, can I get this? Yeah. This? So with with that, like, I actually thinking you've got me fucking thinking on the spot here, and I yeah, still had a no, great brain wave, and yeah. I've just thought, being the podcast, you do like a special album launch yeah. episode of yeah. it, and what we say in between the tracks. As we play the tracks here, is what goes in between it's the what tracks. Goes in between yeah. the tracks. It gets fucking yeah. quite angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. It's, uh, yeah. quite a good way to do it. Yeah, I to like get that. the most organic feel about it. We so, just need to, um, we just need to do some more, make some more music. Yeah, because we, we we started doing it. Like I went round his. He was like, oh yeah, let's start doing it once a week. Went round his. Did we do two tunes or one? I think we did like one and a half. We did like in like, like an a hour and a half when we was up at. We did batch at yours. Yeah. We did a batch fucking up at Lansdowne. Yeah. But yeah, it just needs to be fucking a few consistent more. like every other week fucking on a Tuesday at fucking four o'clock or whatever. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Um, but as well as that, I've got a project that I'm doing with Bailey's Brown. That yeah, that's what I was on to next. Individual projects. So I... For you. 
with that, I fucking ripped all the tracks and then I didn't like them. And it's like, because I think his beats are so sick. And I'm like, oh, nah. And I really want to bring my A game to it. Oh, right, okay. And I was like, I, ri- I wrote to all the tracks. And I was like, and you didn't like it. And I've wrote them all again. And I've wrote them. I sat down. I've got them all loaded up in Pro Tools now, and I'm ready to record the first. So what's track. putting pressure on you there? The beats. The beats are that good. Yeah. I mean, he's and a just, fucking. He's just a wanna, fucking. You just want to be able to complement the beats yeah, with your I mean, best. He's he's a he's a producer and an artist that I very much respect. And yeah. Like, I want to do the best. I want to. Yeah, yeah. You want it. Do you know what I mean? And it's um. So yeah. So I rewrote them. So that's like I wrote the first batch. So I got. How many? How many are you doing? I've got five loaded up and I've got to pick five more up off of him. So the first five I'm ready to record. So what are you doing? Oh, you're doing an album for him? For, with I'm, with I'm his doing beats? an album produced by, produced him. by him. Yeah. Um, and also a Australian producer called Pang to the Credit. Um, linked up with him for Instagram. Um, and <clears throat> I did a track and then I sent that back. I said, have you got any more? We'll do like a little EP or something. And he sent them back and... He, what did he send me? I think he sent me about eight. I was like, yeah, got them. <laughs> so I've got them. So it's like, I just, again, it's fucking waiting to record them. I recorded the first one. Um, uh, so I've got the rest ready to record. And then also Mr. Bones. I'm doing an EP with Mr. Bones as well. Um, he said, again, he sent me some beats. He's like, he was doing a collaborative mm. album. And he said, um, can I do a couple of tracks for him? And he sent me nine beats and I said yeah I'll take the lot Fuck <laughs> it's a lot of work yeah but it's like the what I'm liking is because if I'm sat there on my own and I'm producing it or whatever it can be quite demanding mm. with two kids and fucking everything else that's going on it so working with producers you just have to concentrate like, on your get the game. bars get the lyrics get done it get it done and then like details of the rest fucking I'm probably even gonna get someone else to mix it as well mm. like just to fucking mm. just to be more efficient because mm. otherwise you're doing all of it you do that and then you like the trouble is you get into like this flow so you record stuff and then you go off and you mix it and you come out of the flow it's like I find this really nice if you're going to mix stuff you want to be in a frame of mind where you're just mixing all the time or just give it to someone who does mix it yeah, and I yeah. do like mixing tracks but when you're not doing it all the time and so then you record something and you mix something you're taking away and it's like just <clears throat> write and fucking record write and record mm-hmm. and get someone else to do that if mm-hmm. you know what I mean um, but yeah fair play now I know you're on the beat making Yeah, got loads of stuff going on I know I got little bits going on, but no, you got loads. You yeah. just got loads of other things going on. Yeah, well. that's that's what the problem is. But um, next now nah, next year I've got, I am gonna work on a solo EP with um a kid that I'm working with called Nineteen. His name's Merce, Nineteen Ninety Nine. Okay. And he's fucking good. That was obviously when he was born. I don't know. He's a young boy. Okay. And I ignored him for a long time. <laughs> oh right. Okay. I work with him, innit? He's oh, another. Right. He's he's another one of um. My my colleagues slash employees, um, oh, right, okay. and I just ignored him. He's like, "Yeah, I make music." I was like, "Yeah, all right, of course you do." <laughs> oh, so oh, so you weren't going to give him beats? He's going to give you? Nah, beats. he's got beats. Yeah, he's got Good. beats. Yeah, he's sick. So when he first sent me a beat, like it was just sat in my inbox for ages, and I f- I just kept on forgetting about it. And mm. when I listened to it, I was like, I phoned him. I was like, "This isn't you." <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, it is. I've been telling you." And I'm like, "I'm so sorry." I'm sorry, bruv. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then I've got a newfound respect for him, obviously. Um, not that I didn't before. I just liked winding him up. But um, yeah, he's really good. Um, so I've got the concept for it already. I've got every tune. It's not written because I haven't got the beats yet. Mm. But the concept for each song mm. has been done. And it's. I'm, I'm going to try. It's going to be a stretch. I need to. So I'm going to interview different girls. Yeah to get background information on certain parts of the EP. But what I'm going to try and do is write like a love story mm-hmm. from the the moment you meet that person to the moment it ends mm-hmm. as a man, but from the woman's perspective. Like George the Poet, Chicken and the Egg. I don't know what that is. Oh, mate, that's fucking... Just looking at the relationship from a different different aspect, obviously. Yeah. From the woman's side of things. From it, the so. woman's side of things. Yeah. George the Poet, he done a... EP called Chicken and the Egg okay. and he does that he does both sides and like fucking 
Yeah, you, might, you might or might not want to listen to it. I'm not going to listen to it. Yeah, I'm not going to listen to it. I would highly suggest you listen to it because it's a fucking very good piece of art. Like, to me, he's, I'll listen to like it after I've done track, it. But like, mm. Yeah, he does it as like the, from both sides. And it's mm. spoken word and he's mm. just fucking, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sick. Before we finish, there's one person I want to quickly glide on. The Canadian brother. That bod. That bod. Yeah. yeah, man. Because I know that you and him started getting together maybe about two years, 18 months ago, mm. two years ago. And I've seen he's uploaded on his Instagram, I think, the Christmas stuff from last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, still relevant. Still relevant, obviously, time mm. of the year. Um, just quickly, <laughs> how did that come about, your association with him? Because he seems... He actually seems a Canadian Jimson. How weird that sounds. He's um he's a really creative guy, man. He's mm. fucking and he he does this thing. So he's like got um Malik Maron is like one character, which is based on his like yeah, himself. And then yeah. he's got Dad Bod, which is like the musician. The other guy, and then he's got the other ones. He's got like these characters and he's like he always arguing with each other in the video. Yeah. One's like the straight lace and the other one's like you know? And um He's still doing it and he's fucking sticking out and he's, yeah, he's working really hard with that. But I met him in DKMBA, Damien Key's Music Business Academy. Mm. And um, so Damo, who's, who's runs the company, so he, he started BIM, which was, um, which is like the biggest music college in the country. And he sold his parts. What does BIM it. stand for? Something music. Institute of Music. It's the university. All right. Yeah. I mean, fucking. But he, so the basis of what we're saying, probably British, British, British Institute British, of Music, British of Music, or some shit like yeah. that. But he's like, he. There was four people who founded that, and then now that is like fucking the biggest, like music college. But he like, he he even says he says he didn't like it. He's very ground, likes to be in and involved. With goes, but when something gets that big and you you scale a company that size, yeah. Because you don't know who these people are. You can't remember people's names. You fucking it's huge. You've got like places all over the country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he started up his this thing online. He started off as doing YouTube videos and that about the music industry. Mm. And then he set up his DK MBA thing, um, teaching people how to music market your music basically. And me and Dad Bod, we were like we were like one of the first people in in that. He only set DK MBA up the, the private group of it like last April. And it's grown. That's, oh, right. that's grown massively as well. That's now like how many people's in it? There's five thousand in it now. What on, on the on the Facebook? It's five thousand. This is only right. from last April when we were in there. There was like five hundred. Like, do you mean like in like in a year or so? Just over. He's like, he's going. He's, he's like got like fucking. Uh, what's he got? Has he got like a million subscribers or some shit on YouTube? That's mad. Um, but yeah, I met I met that but for there. A lot of the musicians I've worked with this year, I've met for there. John Seaton. Yeah. Met for there. Yeah. How was that? How was that the other day? Because oh, we really haven't good, even man. spoke about that. Yeah, it was good. So was that in Brighton? Yeah. yeah touch so John, on uh, he had this goal this year. So big up John. He like he like went through with his goals. He had a goal this year. He approached me at the end of last year and said, I want to work with a different producer and different artist each month this year and put twelve tracks out throughout the year, one a month, different person, collab each month. Fair play. I was like, cool. So he was supposed to come down in January, but COVID hit. So he actually come down in April. Mm. We did dopamine, but he did it. And his last tracks out at the time of recording this this week. But by the time this is out, it'll be out. It's called the Crown. But yeah, he did that, and he put his like final show on for the year. He's what taking was it a like? break now. It was good. Like he so he hi he hired the band because he hasn't got bands. So he like yeah. got professional band members to come in, and it's really interesting because I thought they were like. I thought they would have been rehearsing together for ages. He goes, nah. No, they, 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 the first time they rehearsed together was the day before the show. Yeah. So he sent them all the tracks. They went home, learned it. They had a day of learning it together on stage the day before. And like, it was like they were a fucking That's musicians though, isn't it? But That's they, they do it full time. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, yeah, 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 they're professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even but though yeah. he's being look, a professional look, musician, look, shit. Like <laughs> and, stuff. Yeah. and I know that would be some something like Flash. Yeah, yeah. Somebody just tells Flash what he needs and all yeah, he needs is just a, a quick little half hour with it and yeah. then bang, he can yeah, go on. Done. That is the art of yeah. musicians. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, as opposed said to me, said, if you give someone a fucking track and they haven't got that in a week, like... Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, the show was fucking wicked. Like, he was... Um, yeah, it was really good. It was just fucking nice little weekend away without fucking mm. having to wake up and do you know yeah, shit. Nice, but yeah, who else did I work with from there? Uh, Dad Bod, John Seaton, um, Anthony Lee Phillips, the track that's just come out. The guy with bits. the um, the one that was like a bit metally. Oh, Golden Plates? Yeah. Golden Plates. Which is the one you record. released about two days, three days ago. Yeah, the one with Anthony Lee Phillips. Yeah. He's yeah. like, so that like fucking, I had a nightmare like trying to line it up in Pro Tools. Mm. 
And then someone commented on the YouTube video, it's like, oh, seven, eight time. I was like, well, that's why it won't fucking line up. Because mm. the drum beat is like so like, he, that dude, right? He's fucking next level, like talented. So he like plays bowed strings, like cello, fucking mm. violin. He plays piano, plays all fucking oh, string mad. instruments. Mad. And he, the, the music he makes himself, he sounds, his voice sounds a little bit like Ben Howard. But it's like very smooth, jazzy, coffee shop fucking mm. music. And he's very good at it. But he also composes like fucking full-blown scores, like film music. Wow. Like, wow. like, like some fucking Hans Zimmer shit. Mm. Yeah, really. Highly fucking talented dude. And he just sent me the video of him playing the fucking guitar in a, in a video on Instagram, just randomly. And then he was like, so I just went back. I was like, do you want me to rap on it? He was like, yeah, yeah. let's fucking do it. Let's like, do it. Yeah. Um, you done the, yeah, and you've done the bars for it already. Done, it's out. It's out. That was out. Yeah, that was out. How long did it take you to do those bars? Ten minutes. So quick. I broke half asleep. Well, one thing I'm fr- I'm hey. noticing with you is it's a fucking you machine. Are turning, and I think it was since you were doing the early morning bars. Yeah. Yeah, you used yeah, all you of my be beats, bro. Innovative, <laughs> on the ball. In fact, first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. And when you conquered that, you can conquer anything. Yeah. Fair yeah. play to you. Fair play to you I think that. it was like holding myself accountable for each day just to put 30 minutes aside. Did you find that telling people this is what you were going to do made you do it? Yeah. Did you, did you feel that if you didn't tell people you were doing it, you may have sort of... Skipped on it. Skipped on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think... You, do I, you use your social medias for that? In a way of getting it out there, so therefore it puts pressure on you to complete what you say you're going to do. Yeah. I also think it's good to... I write it down in a journal. Yeah. Like, this like this is like... I, I write in these, like, daily lurks. It's fucking like... It's one of those... I'm the thinking Roscoe about meets. ending things. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says in there somewhere, bro. But it's like, do you know what I mean? It's like I write things and I'll say, like, fucking, like, what I'm going to do. Yeah. Like, what I'm grateful for. Like, do not compare yourself to things like... to. To write it down kinetically so it stick in your head. Sticks like, in your head. If like, do you mean? There, but there'll be things like, um, trying to find a fucking example of like where I'm like saying I'm going to do this. Do you know what I mean? It's like if I write I'm going to do it, I wrote it in there. If I've then told someone I'm going to do it, hopefully it's someone who's going to hold me accountable. Yeah. Or it's like it's like I've said I'm going to do it and I have to do it. I have to do it and push you through to it. Do you yeah. Because I know there's some people who say don't tell people what you're going to do. But it's, sometimes you need to tell them. Yeah, it's Because they yeah, keep yeah, you yeah, on yeah. the edge of doing yeah, it. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I think there's the, the whole thing of some people think it's a bit risky. It's like, oh, no, don't tell them what you're going to do because it's like, it's like, nah, if you say it and you put it out there, mm. it's like the whole thing of like manifesting it. Mm. Like, whatever people's beliefs are on manifesting your reality, I think you really can manifest your reality by putting it out there, writing it down and fucking... The whole thing's like practicing it, living it in your head before you It's like it. obviously I'm doing this soulful house thing, and there's a lot of things that I put out on social media, and I actually do it for that reason alone, mm. so that it keeps me on my toes. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? But then you'll get somebody who'll turn around to you and say something like, "Oh, you're posting every day," and it's like, "Yeah, you don't understand. I'm just yeah. keeping myself on the ball." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and to be honest, if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't be getting the satisfaction that I'm getting out of it. Yeah. Mm. And the satisfaction out of it isn't money for me. It's just at this late stage of my life, picking up a new hobby yeah. and going out. And, and the teacher. And the teacher. <laughs> but do you know what, though? It, it does, like, it takes balls for anyone to go and fucking do something. And it's like... Well, and then show it off to yeah, yeah. so it's many really, people. It takes balls yeah. to, put, to put yourself out into the world, whatever it is you're doing, whether it's DJing, whether it's rapping, whether it's... Because you're there to be shot at. Whatever. You're, you're there to be yeah, shot at. Do you mm. mean it's, people will, whether they're resentful, whether they're just fucking or whatever. It's like, it's usually when people give the bad comments, it's usually more fucking, it says about them more than it does. You. I find the likes don't come when I put up something. The likes come when something went wrong. Mm. Yeah. It's like what I said to you the other yeah, day about yeah, my yeah. trainers, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like the only time people will comment is if it's something to laugh at mm. or something to, to, to dig Misfortune. You out Misfortune. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. There's so many different things I put on Facebook, whether current affairs, music, football, whatever. Mm. Don't get no likes. Mm-mm. But as soon as something goes wrong, what happened to your hard drive, Mark? Yeah, what happened to your hard drive? <laughs> yeah, it's a story. Yeah. And I had a load of inboxes yeah, of course. people. I told a story of me playing in the club the other night, and for 22 seconds, the hard drive come out of the USB yeah. port. And for 22 seconds, I'm like, shit, what do I do? And I get the call. Yeah, so all the I'm, music stops. <laughs> so I'm what like, I'm doing ah. is like, you're now listening to the sounds of market, shouting it out, and just <laughs> trying to be funny with the crowd. And it worked. Yeah. 22 seconds, back in, bang. 
But when I told the story on Instagram, I'm just telling it because I want to be transparent. But you want to see how many inbox laughter emojis that yeah. I got. Yeah. You know, because people love to they hear. They bloopers, man. They yeah. love it, mate. They love it. And they're always these fuckers that are just in there. I said to nothing. him the other yeah. day, like when I bought the 720 Air Max bubble all the way around. Yeah. All the way around the whole soul. It punctured. And I took a photo of it. Wore them once. Punctured bubble. I had more interaction with that than I ever have mm. on people any are post. Yeah. There's about 100 also, though, fucking you know, laughing I emojis. I think it was Coca-Cola who did a study, right? And they did a study on how news travels. Right. And I can't remember the exact figures, but it was something like, on average, people tell seven people fucking good news if they've got some good news. Mm. If they've had bad news happen to them, on average, 17. they tell fucking like 11, 12 or something. Yeah. They tell way more people that it's they've mad, had bad, something bad happen. But it, like... We're guilty of ourselves. I used to do it, yeah. but I don't anymore. But like, I do it to myself where I like beat myself up about fucking yeah. little things. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hang on a minute. Like, look at what I am doing. Like, <laughs> Mate, your post the other day. What about the wanking? <laughs> yeah. like, oh, like, bro, oh, I watched it and I was <laughs> creasing up. Because then you were like, but I, I went to there. I did this. Yeah. I did that. I'm like, no, just Matt's beating me, himself up it, about yeah. wanking and a curry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, I was Allow like, it, bro. Like, but that, like for me, I was like fucking, I was like, why am I concentrating on these two things? But it's what it was. I was like, right, not like, I wanted to not eat any takeout. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I mean? yeah. And I had yeah, two yeah. days to go. Yeah, you set yourself a target. Two right? days to go. And like mm. fucking, I was so tired. Like I had to be up at like fucking one in the morning. My alarm was going off. And I was shattered. I mean, I got home and my self-esteem was just low. I was like, I just want comfort, food, and a wank. But then afterwards, like, you're like, oh my I'm God, so oh my God. God. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I've got a really like, see like, But then I, I, I was, do you know what? It wasn't until after I got the post, I was like, oh my God, this is going to look fucking like, for the normal person, it's like, Instead of curry in the way, like, yeah. What's yeah. Like, what's yeah. Do, like, yeah, yeah. Like, fuck you. I was like, oh yeah, maybe like I should explain that I was fucking actually trying. Because I understood like, it. Because I got a Burger King takeaway the other day on on Uber as well. When Burger it's, King? Yeah, it's down the road from me, like oh. plant based burger or whatever. I could have just walked to Burger King and got a Burger King. Got lazy. But I got an Uber Eats of oh. Burger King. And then ate it and then was disgusted in myself. Disgusted, yeah. with it. disgusted bro. Because I had food in the kitchen. Yeah. That was all, I just had to warm it up. But there was things like, there was little things lingering in your own mind. Yeah. And it's like, but it's like, hang on a minute. I'm doing this. Like, do you mean? I fucking, I'm learning Arabic now as well. Are you? Yeah, I'm learning Come Spanish on. and Arabic. That's mad. Arabic's hard, man, because the letter that you read that way and it's like a whole new lettering system. It's nuts. I'm still like alphabet levels like with that. Jeez, you're yeah, still learning to play the piano? Piano, yeah, piano's doing good. Why don't you really teach well. him? Because Fuck I didn't, I learned Roscoe by ear. Huh? I didn't learn oh, right. to read music. Oh, I learned right, okay. to play yeah, I from be, what I heard. I want to be fucking. Which is, I'm pissed off that I didn't. Because for the amount of time that I was playing the piano and for oh. how good I actually was at playing the piano, uh, I should have learned theory yeah. instead of going. Oh, I'm just going to do concerts and competitions and, and just be sick at playing this tune that I'm learning at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Which is annoying, but never mind. Gentlemen, I think that wraps up 2021. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, thanks for coming to your own show. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for that. Um, nobody will be paying you for it, obviously. Big up anyone who has... Tuned in and big up anyone that's come on, come yeah, on. Bigger, yeah, bigger than who's come on. <laughs> wow, might have been the curry and the wank there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, yeah, big up all the guests. All the guests. On. Big up anyone who has tuned in. Um, uh, we hope you had next, a lovely Christmas. Next year we're gonna go a bit harder, like with promotion, like yeah. even if we've got to pay someone, like, I'm fucking less invested in it, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Yeah. Happy new year. I've we'll raised our one. glass to you. Hopefully we don't get fucking locked down again. Have a good year. Have a good Big year. Up. Benji. Big don't forget yes, to hit yes. like and subscribe and smash that button. You fucking bellend. Yeah. Boom, bellends. bang, bang, bang. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, sick. Peace out. Big up Marky. Big up Marky.